Hi, I'm Kat Kosho. Today we're here at my house. We're going to talk about some spray foam insulation, the DAP touch and foam. And today we have Mike to talk about it with us. Thank you. So before we bought the product, I read all of the FAQs, did a lot of research. When I actually bought the box and brought it home, I was surprised how easy to set up and ready to go it was. I was hoping you could walk through the steps of setting it up once you have the box at home. Thank you. That's a great question because DAP has really uh, researched this and engineered this product that it's an easy product to use. And it's a kit for a reason. It's It's got everything ready to go. So the sequence of events that you do is you unpack the material, you leave the tanks in the box, you take out our nice little uh, Ziploc bag that's got extra nozzles and nozzle grease, a DVD that you can play to go through the steps of the product and the FAQs. The other thing is once you're done there, the hoses come out, there's a handle that carries both the tanks to take the weight off the cardboard, and without the nozzle in place, you spray the material to clean, to purge the line or come have the product come through the line, and you're watching for a good flow of product coming through both those little areas of the nozzle, and you're looking for, is it discolored, is it flowing correctly, does it look okay? And once that's done, you put a little grease on the uh, edge of the gun and you put on your nozzle. There are two nozzles, one with a fan spray and one with a conical spray, depending on the area that you're spraying and what effect that you want. And so once you've done that, you're good to go. So when you're getting ready to spray for the foam, I used my respirator, safety glasses. I wore old clothes as well. Um, definitely, I would recommend a hat from personal experience. Mm -hmm. But what would you say customers should make sure that they have for personal protection before they spray? Great. Number one is that respirator. We're spraying a chemical type foam product in sometimes not open environments, not like outside, it's an inside product. And so a ventilator is very very important. Obviously we want to protect our eyes as well for overspray and sometimes things can fly. And as you mentioned, hair is very difficult to get out of hair. It's kind of like chewing gum if you've had <laughs> kids out there. But uh, yeah, uh, a good hair cover. You can wear the suit as I mentioned before or just put on some old clothes. And then obviously protecting the space. What would we put plastic over our windows and Fortunately, we don't have floors yet, so we didn't cover the floors, but what would customers want to look out for? The same thing as I mentioned before is if you were going to spray paint the room. You're going to want to use the same procedures to mask the windows, lots of tape, cover the floors, because overspray does happen with any of those products. So just make sure to cover up those areas. The time to cover up those areas is not as you've started spraying. And uh, so a little bit of preparation goes a long way to make the job quicker and easier to do. In my experience when I was doing the spray foam application methods on the big flat walls kind of did a picture, framed it out, and then went back and forth with the fan nozzle. And then we used the conical when we were trying to get into a smaller space that was farther away. Do you have any recommendations for best practices when trying to apply the spray foam? You've learned a lot in a, in a spray, uh, a single spray, and, and that's great. That's what we've designed this product to do. But you're right, it's good to picture frame an area and then fill in to the middle. The uh, things to watch on the application is, I'm sure you experienced, it's very easy to hold the spray gun in one place and have the material really expand. We want to make sure that we don't put on enough product that goes over an inch or so in thickness because it does build heat and we want to make sure that we layer the products. Not that that's going to ruin anything, but it's not an economical use of the product. So is there a rule of thumb for how much time before you build up that second layer? I think about 10 minutes or so is all is to dependent on temperature. The, hot, the hotter the temperature or warmer the temperature, the more this material will expand. Cool slows down, but about 10 minutes is a general area to let the material cool because as the chemicals mix, they do generate a little bit of heat. And so we let the material cool and then apply the other layer. Could you touch on the process for changing the hose? Absolutely. 
you've got to relieve all the pressure within the hose. So what you do is you make sure the valves are all turned off. You have your garbage can here with the liner in it. You take the nozzle off and then you spray until all the pressure is relieved from the hose. As you know, that can be a rather long process, but hang in there, it, it'll, it'll work. Try to avoid shaking the hose. That may reactivate some of the, the materials in the hose. And eventually you will get to a point where there's no pressure. Then using that handy little wrench that's included with the product, you can undo the hose and put a new one on. We did switch the hose, and when we were draining the material and then took it off of the cans, it oozed a bit. Uh, we put it, luckily, in a garbage bag like this one cool. so that we didn't make a mess. Um, is that That's normal. Probably a good thing for people to know. <laughs> Yeah, it can be a messy product, and taking the extra precaution with the garbage bag and the separate uh, canisters, that was a good move. And it will eventually stop, and it will quit foaming, and you can clean it up with your, your solvent, and then you can put your, your hose on, and you're ready to go. What if somebody did get overspray on something? How would they go about removing it? Well, it, depending on the state of the product, if it's still in its wet state, you, we have a uh, polyclean solvent that will dissolve this product and you can wipe it away. If the material is already hardened, you'll need an abrasive way just to, and most of the time the material will just flake off the surface, the solid surface, like it did within the, the uh, two by fours that mm -hmm. we were overspraying. And it's just a matter of taking a putty knife and, and scraping it off. We had a can of that solvent on hand. We actually ended up using it to clean out the gun when we were gonna, when we had stopped and we we're gonna start again. Um, obviously it's great for overspray. Are there any other reasons to use a product or uses for it? The main use of this product is in our foam products. We have the two component foam, single component foam, but and gun grade foam. And this is what we've designed to use with all those products. On that, when you mention cleaning the gun, it's not necessary, as you realize uh, and have experience, to disassemble the gun and clean it all out. This on a little cloth, cleaning the no uh, underneath the nozzle is all you need to do in between applications. And it kind of uh, dissolves the product when it's wet, carries it away. Great. So just to clarify, that's for when the foam is still wet. Correct. Okay, great. And if it's dry, you need an abrasive. Correct. Now that we've used all of our product and we have both of the cans and the hoses, what is the best way to dispose of it? Well, the best way is to follow the instructions that are on uh, printed in, in the literature because every state has their own uh, rules and regulations and things like that. We live in a state that's beautiful when it comes to hazmat materials because they have hazmat disposal sites. And so you can uh, run up there, they'll tell you, here's what I need, here you go, and take care of it for you. I've had a great experience using this product. I was admittedly I was nervous but it ended up being very fun it was easy to use it was pretty self-explanatory opening it up I just want to thank you for coming and talking about the product and all of your advice as we were going through the product it was really a fun experience same here it was it was a fun experience for me as well especially with first-time users of the product to demonstrate uh, how neat it is to to go out and spray and have this material uh, work for you thank you